This is the first all-metal Nintendo Switch Lite, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Longtime viewers of the channel know I have a soft spot for metal consoles. After recently doing a metal shell swap for the original Nintendo Switch and Joy-Cons, the Switch Lite seems like a natural follow-up. So, sit back, relax, and let's take a look at this beautiful machined aluminum shell for the Nintendo Switch Lite. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. It's another day and we got another metal shell we'll be taking a look at, this time for the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now this is an absolute first for the console, but for those of you who are new to the channel, I actually did a similar mod to the original Nintendo Switch and its Joy-Cons. I'll have those videos linked below if you're interested in checking those out. Or better yet, check out my Metal Mods playlist for all the videos I've done on metal shell swaps for a bunch of different consoles. Okay, so before we move on, I'm sure some of you are wondering how you can get your hands on one of these kits. Well, for those of you who are interested, I actually have some very exciting news which I'll get into at the end of this video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna start off by showing you what's included in this aluminum shell kit and then I'll go over how to install it. I'll also run a few tests to see if there is any negative impact to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi performance with the aluminum shells installed. I'll go over the pros and cons of this kit, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first items included in this kit are of course the front and rear aluminum shells. These pretty much look exactly like regular Switch Lite shells, except of course they are made entirely out of machined aluminum. Additionally, they have been anodized with this very nice sparkling metallic finish. It is very similar to what you would find on an Apple product such as this MacBook, and I absolutely love it. Okay, the next thing included in the kit are these machine screws which you'll need to complete the shell swap. There are three different lengths in total, 3mm, 5mm, and 6mm. I'll go over exactly where each screw is used during the installation tutorial. And the last items included are these Phillips and TriPoint screwdrivers, which are provided in case you don't have a set of your own. All right, so it's not much, but that's everything included in this kit. Now, let me show you how to install it onto your Switch Lite. All right, so reshelling a Switch Lite definitely requires some patience. This tutorial will show you all the steps to disassemble the console, as well as how to install all the components into the new machined aluminum shell. This is quite a lengthy tutorial, however I tried to make each step as clear as possible visually. I also left some timestamps in the video description if you want to fast forward to certain parts of the tutorial. Now during the reassembly portion of the tutorial, I will indicate on screen as to the size of the screw that you will need to use. It is important to use the correct one or you could strip the screw. I also will chime in from time to time at key parts of the disassembly and reassembly, as most of the other steps should be clear through the video footage. Now, one of the key things to remember during reassembly is to not over tighten the screws. I can't stress that enough. Doing so will most definitely strip the threads. Just take your time and exercise good judgment. These screws are extremely tiny and do not need to be overly tightened. Anyway, on with the tutorial.
When removing the ribbon cables, you want to be very careful. The connector and cables themselves are quite delicate. Now this screw here will need to be reused, so be sure to store it in a safe location since we'll need it for the reassembly later on. Carefully fish out the LCD ribbon cable through the midframe, making sure not to damage it. Now comes the hardest part of the entire mod, removing the LCD. To do this, I am using the iFixit eye opener. It's a heated pad that you warm up in the microwave and use it to loosen the adhesive securing the LCD to the switch light shell. You can also use a hair dryer for this step as well. Then start to separate the LCD from the shell by very gently pushing up on the edges of the LCD. Please do not use a lot of force. If it's not separating, heat up the adhesive some more and then give it another try. After you do get some separation, I used these guitar pick looking things from iFixit and placed them in between the LCD and the shell to keep them separated as I work my way around the screen. Again, do not use a lot of force and absolutely do not push up from the center of the LCD. Doing so will damage it. You want to be as gentle as possible. Great, with the LCD removed, make sure the ribbon cables on both sides are not sticking to the adhesive. Now let's install it into the new metal shell. Starting on the side of the switch with the home button, place the LCD in at an angle, making sure the ribbon cables are routed to the inside of the shell as shown. Make sure you have the orientation of the LCD correct. You don't want to install it upside down. 
fantastic, the LCD has been installed. Now on with the rest of the reassembly. This is the original screw that needs to be reused that we saved from earlier in the tutorial.
Now putting in the LNR triggers was a bit tight. I used a pick to wedge the trigger over the micro switch. It's a bit tight, but it does fit.
Every time I install one of these aluminum shells onto a console, I am always impressed. The metal shell looks and feels great in the hands and makes the switch light feel more premium. The white buttons look really nice against the metallic finish of the shell. I'm also actually really glad that I used a dark gray switch light for this build because the dark gray accents of all the other components such as the volume rocker and game card cover really fit well with the overall console color scheme. In short, the console looks and feels fantastic. I couldn't be happier. But now that we have the aluminum shells installed on the switch light, let's see if there are any negative impacts to either the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi reception. So one thing I know some folks are concerned with are potential Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal degradation due to interference caused by the metal shells. This brings me to one of the really cool features of the shell's design, which takes this into account. So in order to combat any interference to the wireless signals, this plastic inlay was integrated into the shell's design for the Wi-Fi antenna, and this cutout on the bottom is here for the Bluetooth antenna. Both of these are openings in the aluminum shell to allow for wireless signals to pass through. Now, I live in a small apartment, so Wi-Fi coverage for me is never really an issue, and your results may vary depending on how far away you are from your router. However, as far as Wi-Fi signals concerned, I haven't noticed any difference at all. And in order to test Bluetooth, I paired a set of Joy-Cons to the Switch Lite to see how far away I could be and still control the console. The paired Joy-Cons were able to remain connected to the Switch Lite all the way from my bedroom, which is over 20 feet away from my den where I placed the console. So I think it's safe to say that both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work perfectly well with the aluminum shells installed. And while I'm sure it does affect the signal somewhat, it's not something that was noticeable during normal everyday use. All right, so now that we know how the shell performs when it comes to wireless connectivity, let's take a look at the pros and cons of the shell itself. Starting with the pros, the construction of the shell is absolutely fantastic. The quality, fit and finish are all very good. It feels great in the hands and it has a bit more heft to it, weighing in at about 330 grams. That's about 50 grams or two ounces more than an unmodified switch light. Additionally, I love that the shell design takes into account both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. It utilizes strategically placed cutouts for both antennas, and I haven't noticed any negative impact to either. Now, when it comes to cons, I could really only think of one, and that is the difficulty of the mod itself. I would consider this an intermediate or even advanced mod since there are a lot of components to remove and keep track of. The ribbon cables are delicate, and over-tightening the screws could strip the threads if you're not careful. However, that being said, if you are attentive and take your time, I think this is a very doable mod. The most daunting part, at least for me, was the LCD screen removal. But again, if you take your time and don't rush things and also use the right tools, you should be okay. All right, now I'm sure some of you are wondering how you can get your hands on one of these aluminum shell kits. And the truth is, I'll actually be selling these. I've been toying with the idea of opening a small online store for a while, mostly just for small items like t-shirts, hats, stickers, and perhaps even some of my own modded consoles that I've done on this channel. But the creator of this mod actually reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in distributing his Switch Lite shells for him. I'm definitely up for trying something new and jumped at the opportunity. So I will be selling these as soon as I get my web store up and running, which should be in the next few weeks. Definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel, following me on Twitter and Instagram, and also join the Discord server because I will be posting updates on progress with the store. Now initially, I will do a small run of these shells, just to make sure everything is running smoothly and also to gauge interest in the shell itself. So a lot of exciting things to come, so definitely be on the lookout for updates. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, see you all next Thursday.